Welcome to Caseback Watches. My name is Tim and I wish you a happy new year. This is the first video on Caseback Watches in the 20s. Can you, can you believe this? We are back in the 20s now. So all the best for the next year for you and your family and your friends. And now let's go, let's get started here. Um, I have a few New Year's resolutions. And I've, I'm fulfilling one right now in this second. This is the new camera lens. <laughs> I wanted to improve the, the, the video quality on case back watches and they told me you need a new camera lens. Take this one. It's way better than your older one. And it retails at 900 euros. It's so painful. But I think it's worth. I think it's worth. We will see if the quality um, survives the, the YouTube converter. We will see that. Okay, but now to the first topic in this video. You have read the title, Diesel Punk Executive Back. What's going on? Why, <laughs> why do I need the Diesel Punk Executive Back? Um, I'm not a maniac. I'm not a Diesel Punk maniac. I see Diesel Punk and Steampunk sometimes as the spice in the soup. Right? You have an item and then you have a little bit of diesel punk in it just to spice it up. But I want to wear my items day to day and so I don't need something super, super exotic. But then I saw uh, an image of the diesel punk executive bag and I thought, that's my next bag. This is my next bag. I was so excited about the look, the design, so what's this? I want it. And then I realized it's not for sale. It's not for sale. It's the design work of a gentleman called Tony. And he runs, um, what was the website, dieselpunk.ro. I think this is for Romania. And he runs a YouTube channel as well. And he sells only the pattern for the Diesel Punk executive bag and other items. And this is not an affiliate link uh, video, by the way. I'm not affiliated with Tony. And so I can tell you that most of his designs are way over the top for a person like me or like you maybe. But the Diesel Punk executive bag was so insane and I wanted to buy it. And then I thought, okay, um, then you have uh, to, to find a good leather worker who does the job for you. But I had some acquisitions in the last days or the last weeks. The watch, which is topic number two in this video, the camera lens retails are to be super precise, 889 euros. That's roughly $1,000. And the, the, the vacations for next June for the entire family. I've paid a fraction of that. And so bills are piling up. And, and I thought, okay, if you find a good... Um, leather worker and uh, then he will charge you what was then the price for the bag 1000 1500 I mean leather is damn expensive and then I've decided okay then do it yourself and if you're a subscriber of the channel here then you know you may know that I'm a relatively skilled tailor relatively skilled coat maker so my garments are made by me and so I, I know my craft and but is this enough I mean leather is completely different but I thought, okay, let's do it. Let's just do it. And so I visited an old gentleman who runs a leather store here in, in, in the city. And I told him, look, I'm a tailor. And what do you think? Can I make this thing? Is this possible for me? Can I make this thing with the first attempt? And he scanned me in a very critical way. And then he said, um, yeah, I think 50, 50% chance that you, that you can do this. Um, yeah. And I've made this decision and I said, okay, let's go. Sell me the leather, sell me the tools. He explained me some techniques. And after, after Christmas, I had a few days without family here. And can you believe this? Can you believe this? I've made it. I've made it. I'm not here to, to brag about the bag, um, brag about the bag. But um, I personally, I cannot believe it that it's really possible if you are skilled in a craft and then you pick up leather work and then you can make something like that. Oh my God, I must say, I'm, 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 I'm really proud here. I'm really proud that I've managed it. There, there, it's not flawless. I will show you the thing in the light box, then you can, every, can see everything. But the overall look of it, I mean, look at this substantial thing. It's amazing. I'm, I'm really stunned by by this thing that a normal guy like me can do such a thing with with some effort and some some help of course I'm absolutely stunning uh, um, I have to make the the strap the strap um, uh, is, is, is missing I have to do, do it I have enough leather for it but uh, like this it's, it's just just amazing just amazing and so in this video now I want to show you this thing here in the light box and I will show you um, some some tools I've 
bought, not to, to make an advertising, I just want to, to show you those tools together with some techniques because you can use them for making um, watch straps, for example, or a nice wallet or you name it. You can make small and big leather items with those tools. They're inexpensive, they're easy to, to work with. And so I would just want to show you this part of the journey um, which led to the diesel punk executive back. I mean, in the, in the office, they, they will ask questions. <laughs> they will, <laughs> who has made this, this, this thing? Wow, crazy, absolutely crazy. I'm, I'm still excited, still excited with the back. And then when we are in the light box, then I will take the opportunity to show you a very interesting watch, which stylistically fits the diesel punk executive back a little bit. And this is this thing here, this beauty. This is a very rare Speedmaster reference, Speedmaster automatic with a 18K gold bezel. And this is, um, the watch provides an interesting aesthetic, but also an interesting technical aspect I want to explain, I want to discuss a little bit, and this is the modular chronograph. <laughs> And I want to point out some, some interesting details here with the design. First, you have here this, this shield, this shield thing. And on the, on the original, on Tony's back, there is his logo, his dieselpunk.ro logo. Mine is blank, still blank. I don't have any idea what to do with it right now, but this may change in the near future. And interesting is also, are also those rivets here. You may notice those rivets look odd and this is because the wrong side is on top. Normally you have here those, those domed parts and here you have, have this, this hole, those holes. And so a very strange look, very truly look, but I really, I really love this. But the detail I love most is the copper tube. You find it there. There is a copper tube on top of the back. And this is the, let's say, the foundation of the construction. I find this idea just brilliant. And note those holes, those holes on the leather which covers the, the copper tube. Just amazing, just an amazing detail. And the problem, the, the real challenge here was um, the stitching. You may notice that this line here is not very even. There I've messed up a little bit. And the finishing of those smaller edges. The finishing of, finishing of edges is, is crucial when you work with leather and this is a very um, difficult part and I'm not super happy with my results and I have a question to you because maybe there are some leather workers in my audience. Um, should I buy a Dremel tool? Those little machines where you can stick um, a polisher on top and then it rotates very quickly and then you can polish the edges. Hmm. Is this a good idea or not? Please tell me in the comments. Floor number two are those things here to open the bag. Um, the color doesn't match the rivets, so I have to replace them, but it's not, it's not crucial. That's not, not very important. And error number three was, let me open this. This is diff complicated for me because of the camera. The camera is in the way that the underside of this, of this flap here is not very beautiful. Not very beautiful. I've, it would be better to use a better part of leather here, but I, I was so focused on the surface that I completely forgot the, the underside you see when you open it. And here you see the back side, very easy to, to open. Let me show you this just like that. You can open it like that and then you can store some documents in here because you are the diesel punk executive, right? There it is. Very cool, very cool. And it's, it's still really stiff here, but this will l loosen up a little bit over the years and so yeah so that's it that's the diesel punk executive bag really happy with that there you can see the copper ending you can buy this at your local plumber by the way okay that's it that's the diesel punk executive bag and i think you now you can you can imagine why i'm so excited over this piece it feels absolutely amazing okay now let me show you some of the tools this is the first one you have made seen this. This is a puncher. There you, you, you punch holes in the fabric to have a precise stitching here. And the old leather worker didn't like this. He sold me it, but he said it's um, not the real deal. And normally you, you mark your holes and then you do every hole with this thing. That's an all 
and you stitch through the leather, then you, you make your, your knot with, with the yarn, and then the second one, and so on, and so on, and so on. Then I've combined it. I've used this for the, for the first layer, and this for the, the second so that I had the a very precise distance here between the stitches, but I could re react a little bit to the leather with this thing. This worked pretty well. The second thing I find super useful was this little thing here for, um, for cutting edges, because um, the edges are important. If you see this piece here, then you want a nice edge. This is important for the overall look and if I, as I explained my edges are far away from perfect but this was a, was a good addition to, to reach this look here. It's I don't know how to call this to be frank but it cuts a little bit away from the edge. And this is the idea behind it. Way better than sandpaper which roughens everything up and so here you have a clean cut with this thing and then you can polish then you can polish the edges. And the old leather guy told me to polish the, the edges called wax. And so I received this from my dad. My dad has bees and this is beeswax, nothing more, beeswax. And you use a lighter to make it soft and then you, yeah, you use it for the edges together with the cloth. Some people on YouTube especially, they sell you um, wooden things to make the edges, but the, the old guy said this is uh, b b bullshit. <laughs> he said use a cloth, use a rough cloth and then you create heat and then you have a nice edge. This was the idea. By the way I've made this thing here extra because my diesel punk is still without a logo here and so I've made this piece to practice <laughs> to make a logo. But what kind of logo? What kind of writing? I have no idea. Maybe you have a, an idea and then please tell it in the comments. Um, the next thing I found super useful was this. This is a very advanced full metal slicer. It's super handy for woodwork and also for leather work because it's extremely sharp and you can use it with one hand. You can use it with one hand and the other hand secures then the your, your leather or your wood. And so big recommendation if you want to buy something really handy and with good quality for your projects, then buy one of these. Um, again, this video is not meant to sell you things. Um, so I don't know if I place affiliate links in the descriptions. I mean, when I find some of these tools on Amazon and they are good quality with good ratings and everything, then I will place it as an affiliate link. But it's not the main purpose of this video, as you may know from my other videos. I don't like the influence sometimes of affiliate links. They influence the program in a way I don't like. And so I, I use them very, very rarely. And the last pair of tools are you need some of those, you can make it yourself with leather, this will protect your fingers. And you should use them, you should use them. I know that especially older craftsmen often um, tell you that something like that is for pussies and in my opinion it's not. It's very important to protect your skin and your, 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 yeah, your blood with one of those. And last thing I've used this to, yeah, just to, to secure parts, smaller parts. And now let's Clean up. <laughs> Impossible. I think I need a new cloth here for the light box, but I want to show you the watch now. And so let's clean up a little bit. And now look at this. This is without any doubt the most beautiful Speedy I've ever owned. Maybe the most beautiful Speedy I've ever seen. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a steel case with a golden bezel. Golden bezel, I think, yeah, what is it, 18 karat, maybe 18 karat gold. Such a stunner and together with a really, really white dial, crisp, clean, white dial. And this overall look here, I mean the steel together with the gold, together with the black, together with the white and this distinguishable case here. It's so beautiful, really, really great watch. I was so happy to buy this thing. And the overall dimensions here are very typical for a Speedmaster Reduced. Case diameter is 39, case length is 49.5 and the thickness is 12.5 millimeters only. So very, very small for, for, for a Speedmaster. And what I want to show you here especially is the, the luck width is 18. And there you can see that this is an older watch. Because nowadays no manufacturer would construct such a watch case with the, such a uh, thin uh, such a narrow strap because 
yeah, for, for men's wear it's very unusual to use any more 18 millimeters lock width, but it makes the watch itself a little bit bigger on the wrist. I will show you the watch on my wrist in a second. And this is a plexi, of course, fits the time. Those, this watch is from, let's say, 1990, I think. And so has a lead crystal and together with this form. And you may see here the finishing is very advanced. You have brushed sides together with polished surfaces, together with the gold. And you see dings and dangs here, by the way, which for me is perfectly fine. I have no problem with signs of usage. But overall, really, really great looking piece. And uh, the, the strap is a Herzog strap. This is my strap of choice. So not the original strap. I still have the Omega clasp, but you know what? It's not important for me. Normally I store the original clasps in a, in a little bag and that's it. And now let's speak about the movement. This is interesting. This is a so-called module chronograph. What does this mean? It means inside is an ETA is an ETA together with a module and the module is the chronograph. I've taken an image um, at the watchmaker's shop and there you can see the disassembled watch. There you can see the, the back plate of the module together with the movement, the ETA movement. And the idea behind this is very simple. They wanted to make a watch which is easy to maintain, which is easy to service. So the watchmaker services the ETA and he lets the, the module untouched. The module is designed to last decades, literally decades. And so it's very easy and very affordable. Cost you about 200 to 250 euros for an independent watchmaker to service that watch. And if you need a new module, then of course you have to send it in and then Omega will yeah, swap the entire module, service the EDA, and then you're good to go. And the positives here are easy to see with this method, but there's a downside. There's clearly a downside and I will show you what I mean. If you, I mean operating this watch is pretty easy. It provides hand winding and the chronograph starts with the first pusher and you can stop it with the first pusher. Not very special and you can reset it with the second one. So this is not very special. We are, we all know this. But if you want, if you want to set the time now, then you can see the downside. Now the second hand is running, but it takes a while after the minute hand follows because, because there is a transition between the ETA and the module. And so it takes some seconds for the minute hand to follow the second hand. And so if you want to set the time super precise here, then you have to anticipate this. I mean, it's not a killer argument. It's not a killer downside for the watch, but I think it's worth mentioning it. And some guys said to me, yeah, but this wouldn't fit in a, in a spacecraft. This is an entire different watch from the real Speedy. And you know what? I don't want to be in the spacecraft. Of course, this is an entirely different watch with the gold. I mean, let's be honest, this is a dress Speedy. This is a Speedy you wear together with a nice suit or, or let's say business casual or something like that. This is not the tool watch. This is clearly a little gem, piece of, you know, piece of your personal jewelry. Okay, now let's go back. Okay, welcome back here. And again, this video is not meant to, to show you my capabilities or something like that. No, I, I just want to share my excitement. And, and to be frank, I want to inspire you to try something like that. It's absolutely possible and it feels amazing. The first time I've made a garment which was wearable, which was a pair of trousers, I've tried five times. <laughs> Four trousers were, were insane, they were shit. I've, my first trousers, believe it or not, had two left legs because I had no clue how to cut the fabric correct. And then I had this trouser with, with two left legs, it was embarrassing. But trouser number five were mm, pretty wearable and the feeling was amazing. The feeling was amazing and the feeling with the first suit was more amazing. And I think to carry this the first time on the street will feel amazing too. And you know what the plan is now? This is, as I said, relatively delicate. Relatively delicate, this thing. This is good for the office and some, some more formal occasions. But I want a uh, um, um, diesel punk executive bed for the road. Really robust. And so I will make this again in, a, in another leather, in a more robust leather, more expensive leather maybe. And the goal is that this is then my bag for the rest of my life. And so. I'm 
insane plan i know i know but i think i will do it i think i will do this okay but now we are at the end of this video thank you very much for your attention and maybe until next time And by the way, if you are interested to see um, how I make things like this, then visit me on Instagram, please. It's way easier to show um, some, some steps in the work on Instagram. And so this is, um, this is the platform I've chosen to present you smaller things, smaller topics or a fraction of a topic, something like that. Okay, it's caseback underscore Tim.